hi and welcome so today i want to look at the vitamin b12 and um, get into my whole story of the b12 the importance of b12 in the body and what what i have learned so far about vitamin b12 and its importance in the production of red blood cells in maturation of red blood cells now i'll be using my tablet to guide me along i have my notebook and my pen which has more information again i've bought amino acids and the importance of amino acids and then i'll tie up into a whole discussion of the importance of balancing all these things amino acids and vitamin b12 now um this whole vitamin b12 things has been a you know what i would call a a shocking discovery as far as i'm concerned being a vegetarian for so many years and not you know having the full appreciation that vitamin b12 is from a food source is only found in meat and then you could supplement with it from supplementation sick and then the supplements have its own rabbit hole story to to you know all the way down however in terms of discovery i did not discover this on my own i was impressed by the by a true dream from the creator that you know i should be consuming beef and liver and uh, i did immediately start looking at the importance of beef and liver that's where i started and when i started looking at beef and liver it points that beef and liver is a heavy source or a very um, main source of providing vitamin b12 so then of course the next question is what's the relevance of b12 and um, after finding out the relevance of b12 which you know i would have used chat gpt and simply ask you know why b12 is important and then I would have gone from ChatGPT to figure out that hey, vegetarians lack vegetarians, vegans, and other deficiency style diet may lack vitamin B12 if they are not supplementing with um, external supplements. So food sources for vitamin B12 is very clear. You have to get it from meat, specifically beef, beef liver, the liver of animals gives you vitamin B12, many other food sources from the animal line. So being a vegetarian, you would be at risk, and that is where we need to um, strike the balance in what we are doing. If we are getting into something, we need to know what we are getting into. Now, this is not information that is new. This information has been there. It's just that I have discovered it. And when you discover something, just as Columbus discovered the new, the new world, and there were people living, so to have discovered, so it's new to me. When you do, do, and I would advise you to use something like Brad, which is Google AI or Chat GPT, um, free. They are both free. Google Brad is um, free under your Google account. Most of us have Google accounts, so you just you just Google the word Brad AI, and then you'll see that little icon there, and you talk follow it, and you ask the questions. It will type them in. So if you ask simply why is vitamin B important, you would see responses from those AI coming up with things like. The nervous system health so b12 support the nervous system health um, and they will give you a very short sentence to explain to you that it protects the the layer around your nose and the, if you go into videos and try to understand that they will tell you it's just think about your nose as being electrical wire in your house and there is a sheet of plastic sheet around the wire that is what is it that's the important part of the protective layer to speak of the myelin and the myelin sheet but um, the point here is B12 is important for nerve, nerve system health. B12 is important for red blood formation, right? And B12, the ins, this essential is essentially the part that, that, that had me up in arms. So B12 is important for the production of red blood cells. And then I'll get into the whole introduction in a while. B12 is important for synthesis for DNA synthesis and for energy production. So these are the four main points you would get and then you would be able to go down the rabbit hole of research to get supporting evidence of the importance of these things in B12. In summary, B12 in 19, I think in 1849 there about when it was discovered as a deficiency in the diet, immediately the application of beef and liver would have corrected that effect in persons way back then and then they are researching the 1956 period that would speak a lot about the deficiency being discovered and we will look at that in subsequent videos in time to come 
So why, why is this discussion important to have? Well, the discussion really and truly surrounds the biblical, the biblical statement that tells us the life is in the blood or life is in the blood. And my interpretation of this today is not as it's not as I would have, you know, casually take, taken it maybe a year or a few years back. So we look at Leviticus 17, 14. I think that is where it says the life of every creature is in the blood. And you could check it out in your own Bible or your own books. Um, everybody have their own holy books. The life of every creature is in the blood. That is why I have said to the people of Israel, you must never eat or drink blood. For the life of the creature is in the blood. So whosoever consumes blood will be cut off from the community. Now, I'm not going to get into any discussion for that. I'm just going to take what is important to me here in this text. And what it meant or what it means to me today in 2023, um, December specifically. Today is the 12th of December. Life is in the blood. Um... What I'm understanding and you and I'm going to break it down to explain to you what it means to me now. So the life is in the blood to me. It's about the oxygen being the life. When God breathed the breath of life into man, man became a living soul. And um, I don't know. I was not there. But that breath of life is, is, is what I breathe in every day. And that breath of life keeps me running. As you know, if you do not breathe for a certain amount of time, maybe some people go up to five minutes not breathing. If you do not breathe, and again, breathing is mainly through the nose and the mouth. Really through the nose, we should be breathing on the mouth. But there is some, some, some evidence that shows the skin itself being in oxygen could maybe bring in some oxygen. But the point is, if you don't breathe in that period of time, zero to five minutes, if you don't consistently breathe, whether it's polluted air or whatever, you die. You die in a very short space of time. If you eat in weeks we fast, I would have passed for days, 28 days sometimes. And I didn't die. So I would not have drank, drank water for three days in my dry fasting period. I did not die. But I know I cannot go for five minutes without breathing. If I cough this and if I lock that down, that would be it. And I think that happens for most persons. If you are a human being in 2023, beyond five minutes, you will die. And so what we are seeing here now is, can I break this down? And I'm, I'm breaking this down to say, this text to me here that the life is in the blood from Leviticus means to me, or it's, it's signaling to me that there is something that is in the blood that is important. And I see that important thing as being um, the oxygen. Oxygen is in the blood. Oxygen is life. So why is oxygen life because oxygen is what is transported by the red blood cells to go to the organ cells throughout the body so that the organ cells get that breath of life or they get oxygen or of course they get nutrients which is also part of the life that is in the blood so there is two things the oxygen being the main and the nutrition that is carried by the red blood cells along with oxygen to get to the to the cells in the different organs. Now, I have to be very, very clear here. Every every organ, your brain, your brain has brain cells. The fat around your body is fat cells. Your bones have bone cells. They are all cells. Your lip is a organ of itself. The teeth, the tongue, the gum. Everybody are a little pieces of the organs or little organs that 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 connects together in part of the systems and then the systems connect together to make that whole thing that we are calling the body so at the end of the day what we have is really cells cells goes towards and cells of the same community create what is called the organ so the heart being an organ it's heart cells or cells of that community and those cells of that community don't move around and go down to the two or else your heart would have been in the two today and things like that what moves along is your your blood system your blood system is a transport for nutrition and oxygen and that transportation moves the blood throughout your body goes to your heart feeds your heart feeds your wherever your other organs wherever the blood goes there and feeds them with the two things the oxygen and the nutrients that it is carrying for that specific organ in the body and really it's carrying it for the cells of that organ it's at the very cellular level 
So oxygen is my first point here and oxygen is a very important because um, it is part of the life that is in the blood. The next part that is important inside the blood will be the nutrients that the blood is carrying. So at the end of the day, to feed any part of the body, to give any part of the body food and life, which is oxygen, you need to have blood moving throughout your body. Red blood cells, I would say, moving throughout your body. Now, the more red blood cells are the, the powerful or the power that is in the red blood cell, having the ability to move itself very easy around means you are pushing your energy or you are pushing the nutrients and the oxygen towards the cells in a more effective manner, which is what you want to have happening. So let's think about this. If we have stagnated blood and we call that blood clot, slow blood, then things are not happening properly. So the oxygen is not going to the different parts of the body and the nutrients are not going to the different parts of the body in a timely manner. And we have issues starting to have inflammation and etc. etc. and etc. Like in my case, you know what happened, cancer and so forth. Now, when you have good flowing blood, more than likely you are bringing oxygen to that part of the body and things are recovering and you are bringing nutrients and you are bringing so forth and so on the nutrients by the amino acids to recover the muscles and so forth like that so at the end of the day the life is in the blood is a statement of importance for us to understand oxygen and nutrients therefore let's go to blood what is blood to me blood is simply a car it's the vehicle so the blood is the vehicle and therefore, inside the vehicle, two passengers sit or I'm just going to break it down to say two passengers sit there. Oxygen and nutrients. That is the two passengers. Passenger one and passenger two sits inside this car that is called a red blood cell. Now, nothing is simple as how it's explained here. I'm just doing this so that we would have an appreciation in 2023 for persons like myself who have not really sit and thought about this. So the red blood cell is your car, your transportation medium, and two passengers are there, and they are following this path to bring oxygen, the two passengers, to wherever it has to go on the nutrients. That is the function of the blood. And so this car is a structure that has to be created. And this structure that has to be created is created from materials, raw materials. Just as how your car has to come out from um, metals, smolted and blah, 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 and created into the structure of the car, the chassis and the steering wheel and things. So to the red blood cells have to be created. Now, when you look at a car, the chassis and the body of the car is more, more than likely created from a, a material, like let's just assume metal or aluminum. Now, aluminum is important for that. And it, you might say, well, the car is is mainly made of aluminium so let's figure out the car's aluminium yes there is a steering wheel made of plastic and there is some little things inside but the real part of the car is the aluminium so once you have enough aluminium you could construct the major part of the car now in my old days i used to hear and as they as given to me up to the time when i'm suffering under these issues um iron is for the blood and folic acid um, folic acid which is the synthetic form of folate which is b9 so b9 folate is a real power here and folic acid is the synthetic version but anyhow folic acid and iron that is the discussion you will hear for blood so once your blood is as we usually carry when the blood is weak or low oh get iron and get folic acid and eat iron rich foods make sure you take it with vitamin c that's the protocol and that protocol, I've been following it and nothing has been happening. Until you realize those protocols are missing something. Blood formation and blood maturation, the beginning and the end, is controlled by a number of factors. B9 being one of them. So folate, B9, B9 doesn't create blood by itself. It works along strongly with B12 to the methylation process so b9 b12 are the creators of the b12 
the um, are the signaling creators of the management structure of that factory to do his blood. So without B9, without adequate levels of B9, you could be creating blood, but it would be weak blood, weak blood are the size and shape of the blood, blood cells, the red blood cells would be all over the place and they would be all kind of deformed blood cells. Now when you have a deformed blood cells, more than likely it cannot carry proper oxygen or enough oxygen as its passenger or enough nutrients. You may have blood creation taking place, but deformation of the cells. A red blood cell should have a proper structure, you know, circular, and then when you look at it at the side, it kind of, da da da. It has that structure because it is a structure that has to go through a very narrow passageway and it knows how to do this. But then you could get all kind of different things, and there are scientific terms for that kind of. Um, the, the defects in the, in the in the size of the cell and your your blood test would show you those things when you look really truly at all the hematological tests on that report panel there you would see not just your hemoglobin and your red blood cell count you would see other things and these are the things we have to pay attention to because you may be creating blood but is it a strong proper looking blood cell which is your little transportation to bring oxygen and nutrients and therefore your lack of nutrients is what will cause you to create blood but not the adequate amount and what nutrients do we need to support the creation of blood b12 b9 of course iron iron is the the lining inside that holds the oxygen the hemp holds the oxygen to to, to lock it in your cell Iron, of course, may be very necessary as a very micronutrient to help in the creation of the strength of the blood cell itself. But B12 and B9. What signals the blood to be created? What takes the stem cells from your sternum and your ends of your joints, bones? What signals that to create more stem cells for blood is testosterone. So without adequate hormone testosterone you are now not signaling the stem cells now the stem cells are like the little nothing cells they are just cells created but they are nothing cells they do not create for a specific purpose they are created and then the environment or the call from the body tells those going to becoming red blood cells going to becoming white blood cells going to becoming this or that or whatever whatever heart cells are these cells so stem cells are basic building structures that could be that could convert itself into anything that is needed by the body based on the environment that the body has signaled itself to to get these things happening so stem cells you see it's difficult to explain stem cell because in plant world if you throw a set of seeds on the ground Whatever the seed is becomes that plant. In the human body, stem cell are not specific, specific when it is created. It is only specific when it gets the signal. And so the stem cells are within our body, in the sternum bones, in the, in the bones. And um, testosterone pulls it out and signals to it with another type of hormone that comes from the kidney, EPO. That these two tells these stem cells no we need you to become red blood cells and so that conversion process takes place because the chemical environment that is created is between testosterone and epo now these are two hormones epo and testosterone and so these two hormones you have to ask yourself if you are allowing them if you are not fully compliant with testosterone hormone being at a good level not too high because you could make too much red blood cells or you could signal too much of the stem cells to become blood, red blood. But if you have a good balance of testosterone in your body, then you will be creating, you will be signaling the creation of adequate amount of red blood cells from your stem cells. And so we go from stem cell, testosterone and EPO signaling to become red blood cells and the red blood cells now need to go into the process, its own process. I think it's about four or five cycles. 
own process of becoming a mature red blood cell and that is where B folate iron and other nutrients trace minerals are important but B and folate B and B9 and B12 are very very critical in that process and at the end of it B12 says I would mature a, a cell so B12 comes back and make the red blood cells a matured red blood cell and you have the output of great red blood cells because of the presence of B9 and B12 critical factors not cofactors not supporting factors like the micro trace nutrients but critical factors in creation of the red blood cells and so these red blood cells get created and they go now with their proper seat in place they have the seat for iron they have the seat for nutrients and they get to be transported to wherever they have to go whether it's the heart cells or to the brain cells or to the fat cells or to the B cells or the ears or the nose or the mouth they bring the oxygen and they bring the nutrients to the various parts of the body there and therefore we have that happening and that is what our scripture is telling us the life is in the blood do not go and drink the blood of an animal because the yes there might be oxygen but what nutrients that the animal have is totally different for the animal as compared to you so you wouldn't want to put in that animal nutrients in your body it's different it's totally different and we will get to that especially when it comes to amino acids you would understand that amino acids of the human is the critical point of regeneration creation healing creation and healing is amino acids without amino acids where, where, where what do we do amino acids are the building blocks of life not protein you know we keep on mixing up this they keep on mixing up proteins even though amino acids are the building blocks of life to make a protein to make a human protein or to be very clear a human protein you eat animals you break it down into amino acids and the amino acids are then recreated to make human protein animal protein amino acid recreated to make human protein human protein is what the body uses not the animal protein that is just digested broken down um absorbed and metallic if it has to be metallic or whatever make become bioavailable and then it moves into the structure say okay the body needs protein a protein b it needs insulin it needs a peptide or a steroid and it just creates that through its magical process of the great that the great divine instilled and you have your protein created there and i will speak about protein in another video so what we are seeing here is that the red blood cells have to be supported this creation has to be supported by b12 and by b9 and other factors um, b12 being very important for in the formation process and also at the maturation level so that you have adequate b cells so i thank you for watching me here today and you of course would like to know more about b12 at this time um, if you are a vegetarian a vegan uh, your deficiency in diet style lifestyle is not adequate then you have put yourself in a position where you need to start supplementing with b12 and that's where you need to understand the different type of supplements um, more than likely you need to get methylated form supplements stay away from the cyan or cobalamin and i'll explain that in a while but get methylated and other of the bioavailable form of b12 and also you need to ensure that you have adequate supply of b9 so you would get methylated b9 l methyl tetrahydrofolate b9 and of course all the micronutrients from the b series and all the other series of vitamins you need to have them adequately in your body at, at, at the not just the recommended daily but the optimum daily amount now you would click in the link below to get the recommended type of b vitamins and the recommended type of course i would stay away from any b vitamin that has the synthetic type creation of that b for example b12 is referred to in the synthetic world as cyanocobalamin cyano b cyano b12 there is the methylated form which after if you take cyano and it put it into the body the liver breaks out the cyanide and it releases the b12 which then becomes a methyl b12 in the body 
Now there is already methyl B12 in succulent form. If you consume methyl B12, specifically if you buy those that you put on your tongue, so or you suck them, chew them, suck them, it is already methylated, so it goes into the bloodstream and it does the work already. If you take cyano, it has to go through that process, and then there is a cyanide molecule, it's very small, but a cyanide molecule that, that stays there and has to be detoxified from the body, it has to be removed, metabolized from the body. Um, small as this cyanide molecule might be, and it may not be in a large quantity, there, there, there are risks with this because you may have bad liver, you may have bad kidney, and that is a big issue. Um, bad liver, bad kidney, especially bad kidney is a big issue right now. This could cause more issue for you using a cyano or cyanide based substance. Uh, secondly, the, the, the drinks that we drink in the, the um, I can't call specific name, but the energy drinks with the, with the bull and the, the, the M and those kind of drinks, they have the same chemical composition in them as the vitamin base. So if you read through the vitamin base, you'll notice they will just say vitamin B12 and they would refuse to publish what type of B12. But when you read about the B12, because cyanocobalamin is very stable in light and in different products, they would use that stable compound, which is the manganese synthetic format. But the methylated and the hydro and the andronous, these are good type of um, B12s to to consume. They are bioavailable and ready for the body. They are natural inside the body already. So once you get a reputable supplier who is not just printing words on a bottle, then you would be able to have good B12. And that's the type of B12 I want you to, you know, you could get off Amazon, you could buy that and have that supplemented. Now, you would definitely need to have your other supplements. As again, folic acid, which we would, I would not advise because there is no methylated L-methyl 5, L-methyl folate, you could consume that. That is already the same bioavailable, absorbs directly into the bloodstream. That is already available, so you could get L-methyl folate, you could get um, 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 methylated B12 with other bioavailable forms, either in one supplement combined or you could get them separate. Yes, they might be a little bit expensive, but they might be worth it in the long run because you would see that there. Now, we will chat more about B12 in my next video and why it is important to consume a lot of B12 in 2023 and beyond, maybe in 2023, because you will learn that B12 also deals with the nervous system. And what is happening to us right now, we are living in either flight, fight, or frozen. We are not living in a rest and digested. We are consistently fighting and f because of our telecommunication devices called cell phones, immediate meals and work life. We are always in the state of heightened awareness. And that is draining our, well, not really draining. This is consistently pumping our, our chemicals to our fight and flight stress into the bloodstream. And B12 again has to come into play to help control the balance of those, of those, um, those chemicals converting like serotonin to dopamine and things like that. B12 again, the methylation process. And um, once we know those things, we then start becoming sensitive and aware to understand why we need to ensure we have adequate levels of such vitamins today, much more than before. In the old days, persons were not heightened on their level of awareness. They, you know, they were farmers and homemakers, very you know, tender in their jobs and used to enjoy everything that they do. But then the new day, on with our new technology so we have to learn to relieve we have to learn to breathe again be breathing we have to learn to eat right we have to learn to supplement we can't be eating belly full and not getting the nutrients that the cells require and so my series of videos continuously would be on adequate nutrients in 2023 for the small island guy who has to be very very knowledgeable about where he gets his source of food because affording supplements will be difficult. But he has the adequate source of food from his vegetables, from his herbs, and from his animals that he is growing. And so we need to identify how to, what to do to enhance the nutritional benefits and the bioavailability of these substances. Thank you. Again, if you are interested in looking at anything in terms of supplements, please click my link below to bring you to Amazon. Would you recommend it list?